working on my dressing room and I've moved on to a piece of furniture which is a pine chest of drawers um, which will house my smalls, socks, pants and maybe pyjamas. Um, we needed some drawers because there's going to be lots of hanging rails in here. So I'm painting with chalk paint today and I'm painting old white and I'm doing a flat finish the whole pine chest of drawers is going to be one flat finish to match in with the wall colour. Um, so it seamlessly blends away. I'm going to have a, a hot colour on the kind of the entrance lobby of the dressing room in a bureau. It's going to be part office, part dressing room. And it had me thinking it's a long time since I've painted a piece of furniture just in one flat colour. Well, I have done that, usually it's a colour mix, but one flat colour, especially white, straight from the can. So, um, I did this a lot nine years ago. So, when I started using chalk paint, it was nine years ago. I cannot quite believe it's nine years since I opened my first can of chalk paint. And it had me thinking about the mistakes that I made way back then. And I thought this live video would be quite good to eliminate some of the some of the things that I didn't quite get at the beginning and help others if it's a beginner a beginner when it comes to painting furniture or chalk paint it might be good for those stockists just to share out um, to their customers or give them a link to this video so I'm going to keep it really basic and I think that's where you need to start with any painted furniture. You need to start very simply by giving your piece of furniture a flat coat of paint just to get the feel of how that works. So just talking a little bit about Annie Sloan products, I'm working in this room today which is um, a bit echoey because there's no carpet down and no, no nothing in here apart from me and this piece of furniture. Um, the wall colour behind me is old white um, and that is Annie Sloan, here we go, Annie Sloan wall paint. Um, I can see people popping up. I'm not going to speak to you too much in case this video gets shared because I know it's annoying to other people that catch the video, but I will catch your comments afterwards. So, old white on the walls. Um, when I started, I don't think there was even wall paint. Um, it was just chalk paint. And also, you might be able to see the wind fray there. I've used Annie Sloan satin paint. That most definitely wasn't around. This is Annie Sloan satin paint. This is commonly used for um, trims, skirting boards, architraves. It's an interior grade um, satin paint which goes over wood and metal. I've also used it on the radiator over there. Um, please don't ask me what colour that is over there because it's the first time that I've done this. I've actually mixed satin paint. Um, and it did mix beautifully well. I've gone for a Chateau Grey colour, which currently in this um, paint there isn't. So I mixed up lots of colours, Canterbury yellow, um, graphite to kind of make a, a, a sort of olivey colour. Then I used lots of canvas to um, knock it back and then a couple of other colours. But we'll go into mixing these another day. But yeah, that is what's on all of the woodwork in here you can use this straight over furniture. So this will go straight over a piece of wooden furniture, give it a good old clean. If it's really shiny, um, glossy finish, then I'll just give it a light scuff sand, just a, a light scuff sand. Don't break into the body of um, the varnish because you might get some kickback from um, bleed through. So just a scuff sand. And this should be good to go straight over furniture. I could have used it today on this um, pine chest of drawers. There's a reason why I'm not using it over the pine chest of drawers. This has had a wax finish. It, it Basically, when it was created, it had a wax finish. Um, I would probably have to take that wax off before using Annie Sloan Satin. So I'm opting to go right back to chalk paint. So I've got the old white chalk paint. Um, no need to remove the wax. You could have a chalk painted piece of furniture that basically you'd painted once before and it had a wax finish. Now, lots of people, some of my great friends in the industry do take the um, wax finish off 
down to the paint layer and then paint again. I never do. Annie Sloan Short Paint, the magic of this, you can paint over a wax finish. It will go straight over the top. So if you've got a piece that you've already painted and you want to renew it, go straight on with the um, chalk paint and it should be good. Right, we'll open the can of paint in a moment. Um, I want to talk a bit about the prep work for a beginner when creating um, a simple flat finish. So, what we've got here is I've given it a good old clean. That's one thing that I have done, just given it a good old clean, taking any of the debris away, any bits that you might have in the drawers, anything that might contaminate your paint finish, take it away. Um, you could use uh, mineral spirit. Uh, there's lots of good grime cutters just to take anything away that is greasy. Greasy is not very good. Wax is fine. Um, and once you get to that stage, you're good to go. It's simply brushing can, off you go. Um, what I've got here, I'm changing the handles on, um, and I'm gonna do one right in front of you, hopefully, I'm gonna have the drill. So I'm changing the handles from the original wooden knob, which was on there, which just screwed into the center of each drawer. I've, take, I've removed them and I've found a handle which I really, really like, which is this. So I think the light fitments in here have got this sort of um, antique gold finish and these handles do. These are a kitchen handle. Um, the handle, if you look underneath, they've got this sort of uh, extra bit that slots into the actual um, substrate, the actual timber. So the hole has to be quite big. Some of these type of handles don't have this then you need to measure your screw size to your drill bit. So take a look at that. Um, if you followed me for some time, you know Jonathan likes to risk it for a biscuit. So I do eyeball an awful lot of things. So if you're a little bit unsure of how to drill a hole, take lots of measurements and double check your measurements so that you're not drilling several holes into um, the the piece of furniture because it will look messy and you'll have to go back and fill. Um, I don't do this, I just literally, I'm naughty. So I just go for it. Um, I'm gonna give you a little cheat, which I like to do with this type of handle. Um, so what I do, let me bring the camera down. I'll bring it down here. So the central hole's here. I'll bring it right in front and then we will drill. So I've got the central hole there, I've got my handle, I've looked at where I want it to be. I kind of know that the central hole is good for where these two sections are. It looks good there. I'm happy for it to be slightly closer to the top because your hands go underneath and pull. So that is good. I know that central line is pretty good. So a little hack for your little cheat. If you've never seen this before, take some decorator's tape, which that one's run out. Let me grab some more. Let's go, this is a little bit skinnier, but it'll still do the job. So I'm taking my decorator's tape, taking a section away, and then open your tape out, a bit fiddly, a bit too long as well. So take your tape, and then loosely, don't stretch it too much, just loosely straight across the two holes, Centralise your tape to the two holes and stick it to where those holes are. Can we see? You can see them shining through the tape. And then take a sharp pencil and just poke your holes in. There we go. Two holes now made into that tape. So then we're going to take the tape off the handle and I'm, remember, I'm going through the centre of this hole and I'm eyeballing. This is a little bit naughty. Um, and on this first one, I might take a tape measure and I might measure from the central hole out to each side, but I'm not. Risk it for a biscuit. I'm gonna pop, let's say that measurement is nice and even. I'm gonna pop another hole in there so we know that's the centre of that piece of tape. And then, if you're eyeballing it, you really do want to look at the measurement between here and here. If that's correct and that's correct, you're level. 
Um, me being me, naughty me, I'm just going to eyeball it. And I'm going to pop the pencil in the centre of the hole, kind of jab it in a little bit. This is soft wood, so it really helps push a hole deep into there. And then you can use this tape, repeat, repeat, repeat on each drawer, which I've already done. And then tape your drill bit, which will clear either the screw, but in this case, I've got to clear that to go through. So we're going to push these through. I'm going to put my drill right in the center. There's a little nubbin on the end of the drill, so you can kind of push it into your pencil mark. What you might find is you might need to wiggle your drill a little bit around the top, like just in here, just to widen that hole, um, just to allow the hardware to go in. There we go, clean off any excess dust. In theory, I haven't wiggled it, but in theory, those two nubbings should fit straight into the hole. There you go. And it's a nice tight fit. And then obviously clean up the inside and then your screws will go through. Now, I could fill the hole underneath. I'm not going to, because it won't be seen. It won't be seen under there. If you want to make a good job of it, fill it, sand it, and go away from it. The reason I'm going to leave it is I change furniture so often, what I don't, I, I get fed up quite quickly. Um, I may go back and fill these two holes and put a central hole in it. But with this handle, they're very well hidden because you're only gonna see it from eye line that way. So that is how a handle goes on. Also, you might have seen, I've already taped up the sides of the drawer. So I've taken, some decorated tape. Let me come back up. There we go, you can see me again. So I've taken some decorated tape to the sides. In, in this drawer, there is a, a, a section where the wood interconnects with one another. So I've taped off that section. The timber in this um, chest of drawers is beautiful. It's pitch pine and it's really good. Sometimes you find drawers that are not so good on the inside. This is really good. So I'm gonna make a nice paint, clean connection when we get stuck in with the paint. Um, drawer sides. Um, a lot of people want to uh, paint the sides of drawers or decoupage them. Um, what I would say with that is, depending on the runner, I know in America they have a lot of central runners, um, on certain pieces of furniture, you need to inspect the inside and what's going on and your clearance. So when I talk clearance, I mean when the drawer sits in, how much wriggle room does your drawer have on the interconnecting sides of the piece of furniture? If it's very tight, I would suggest having zero paint on the side of the drawers, maybe even finishing at the front edge. If you've got lots of clearance, it means you can have lots of fun. You can do lots of different things on the edges of your drawers. But of course, the traction of the drawer in and out can scrape paint. Um, so be mindful of how you, um, how much room each drawer has in the carcass. So that's one good thing. It does look lovely if you paint inside a drawer or on the sides of the drawer. Um, Colour washing would be a great, I've got plenty of tutorials for colour washing out there, so you could colour wash or stain the sides of the drawer. If not, you're going to keep it wood like this, I would just go straight in for a wax finish. Just wax it, the wood will look wonderful on the inside, you could use dark wax if you wanted to dark darken that up. So there's a few solutions about um, drawers. Is that everything covered? Cleaning, preparing, oh, handles, I do all of the drilling first, rather than painting, then drilling, because if you drill afterwards, you make a mistake, it looks messy, 
then rambling around with the handle, you can scratch your finish. So always prepare the handles first and then take, once you've got it to this stage, take the handle away, your good paint, and you'll get nice clean strokes if that's what you're going for. If you want clean strokes, you've got the surface to, to do that. Um, any other prep work that you might do on a basic um, paint finish. Cleaning, preparing handles, masking tape, generally checking the piece of furniture. You may have um, anomalies on it. You might have, if it's second-hand furniture, you might have a piece of um, wood chipped away. In that case, I would use sort of a quick drying filler, two-pack filler, just to fix that, sand that away, make it nice and neat. Um, make sure that it's well sanded because it will, any lumpy, bumpy bits will show through your paint. It'll, you know, in the light, it will catch, um, It'll catch the light if it's not sanded smooth with the rest of the piece. So that's one thing. Um, yeah, I think that's about it. So, the, the paint. Let me tell you a little story about the paint. So this, nine years ago, I bought this very same colour and this uh, can of paint, was, which was very different. The branding was very different. It's changed a little. It actually looked a little bit more like that can. That's how the can used to look a little bit like that. Now we've gone a little bit more modern. Um, I bought the can of paint from a lovely stockist. So guys, if you're gonna be using um, Annie Sloan, do uh, first go off to your local stockist. Um, they are a mind full of knowledge. They use this paint, they understand it. They'll also have um, basic workshops. So go and find your local stockist. They're so handy. If you go on Annie Sloan's website, there is a retailer finder. So if you put your postcode in, it'll, it'll take you to your nearest stockist. If you don't have a, a, a close buy stockist, of course you can buy all of the products online. There is many people like myself, very resourceful people that understand the brand, that have put lots out there, like on YouTube. So that's another way to kind of learn a little bit about it if you are a beginner. I know many of you that are actually watching, you're thinking, Jonathan, we know all of this. Um, a lot of my followers do understand it, but I thought it'd be just nice to reel back. So nine years ago, I bought this kind of paint from a local stockist and I went away, painted a piece of furniture. It dried very quickly. It dried in 50, it was in the summer, 15 minutes dried. And then I thought, blimey, that, that's, that's chalky. That's, and it was dry to touch and it was just, this is gonna get greasy marks on it. And I didn't read the can and I didn't go to that stockist to find anything out about it and realized that you, you need to finish it with a wax finish, um, which is this, um, a wax finish, or a lacquer finish to seal and protect it. So it just goes to show knowledge is key when it comes to using something new. Nine years ago, I didn't realize that. And I basically was, a, you know, a bit of myth that I didn't know it. Um, so wax finish once it's nice and dry. Um, the cans, they've changed over the years. So what, what I would say is your brand new can, give it a good old, Good old shake in the can. These are new cans. If you're my new, if you're uh, following me for some time, they've changed the lids again. We had some cans that wasn't so fun to get the lids off. So these lids are uh, amazing. They're so good. Um, if you buy from the stockist, you may get one of these for a pound. If you buy a lot, I'm sure they'll give you one for free. They do online. I only give these away. If you do a big order, you'll get one of these and. They're perfect to open a can of paint into the side, the, uh, into the side, and can you see? Easily, it pops up easily. Let me pull the camera down so you can see what I'm doing here. Um, it's awkward today, I've not got my usual rig. So that's your can of paint. Now, as a painter that's quite creative, over the years, I 
I've enjoyed using the paint and I'm a messy painter. My followers will know this if you're new here. What I would say is try and keep the rim of your can of paint clean. Um, it will help the lid go back on nicely. I don't do this. I'm, I'm literally hammering the lid back on. It gets all chalky around the top. Um, you can decant it out. Um, I would suggest if you're mixing colours, always decant out of it. And if you've got a brush, if you're blending, don't dip the brush from one colour to another because you contaminate your colours. If you want nice black colours, I don't do any of the, the above, but hey ho, it's all good fun. Also, um, with your can of paint, it needs a good old stir. Don't use a knife. Don't use um, something metal, a spoon. That would be the wrong thing because you can damage the can from inside. It has a seal that seems you can knock that. So you need a stir stick or have I got something here? Let's just see. Uh, let's see, yes. It's not quite a stir stick, but a wooden implement is perfect for that job. Um, because if the paint's been sat on a shelf for some time, the sediments kind of separate. So a good old stir into your chalk paint, mix it all around, and then you should be good to go with your paint. So as you can see, it's really thick, the paint. Or as you can see, look, the brush stands up in it. It's really thick in consistency. So you can mix this with 10% water if you feel like you need to um, loosen it up a little bit. Quite often I work with a, a spray bottle, an atomizer, just to loosen the paint if I want to kind of blend and things. In, in this case, I'm quite used to the thickness of the paint. I'm quite happy to just allow my brush to spread this paint around. I'm not adding any water today. I'm just gonna go with it straight from the can. So also brushes. Um, you can pick up all your brushes from your stockist or online. Um, Annie does some really great brushes. She has um, an oval brush. This is a medium oval. She does these in three sizes. Um, I would say this is one of the essential brushes to use with chalk paint. Go with this one. Um, this is a brand new one. It may, it may shed a few hair, hairs to begin with. Um, I've not done anything to this brush. I'm just gonna go straight with it. Um, so that is a great brush. It's um, hog hair, I think, in there, and they are, that's not a stray, um, they are fabulous for spreading chalk paint around. But you can use any other brush. If you've got anything with um, uh, natural bristles in them, they're great. She also does a flat synthetic. That's a great brush to use. Um, any old brush will do. I've got a decorator's brush here. That brush would do. It's a bit battered. I use it for decoration. So that would, that would do. This is a natural um, hair brush. Um, this one, I would say, if you're gonna be using the satin, that works really well with satin. It comes in different sizes, decorating sizes. So that really helps um, when you're applying your first coat of paint. So satin is great with a synthetic, but of course you can do all sorts with these things. It's just me suggesting what you might use. Um, so yeah, great brush for satin. And a wax brush. Now, they're quite expensive. This is a wax brush. Um, and that is great for adding your wax after you've done your first coat of paint. Um, let's see. Also, waxing, you can use um, a sponge, you can use a rag to apply. So you don't have to go to the expense of everything that you see here for a beginner. You can buy, I would invest your can of paint, your wax and a nice brush and you are good to go. Everything else you'll probably already have. So um, once you've done that, then you'll invest again and again. I know that you will because you become addicted like, like I did nine years ago. 
So the rag there is to remove the surplus wax. I am not gonna paint this whole thing in front of you. I just thought it'd be useful for some beginners. Oops. I haven't had anything like this on my channel, reeling back. But we'll paint a little bit of this front drawer. Let's bring it back so you can see. And we'll do the first coat. Over something like this, it probably will take two coats of, of chalk paint. Two to th three. I say two to three. I, I always think it's about two and a half, depending on the colour. This is white, remember? But it is pale wood. If it was mahogany, it would be a different thing. So, one thing I haven't got is water. One thing that I would do is um, wash your brush or spritz it to begin with. Um, and it should add a certain amount of moisture to this brush and then it should flow nicely. I, I haven't come that prepared. So that's one thing that you can do. So in with the paint and you can already see, I can still see the under colour. Now, don't worry about that. Um, the best thing to do is get a nice thin coat on for your first coat. Think of this as, because there's no um, prepping really, there's no um, sanding or removing finishes before painting. Just think of this first coat as your, um, your prep work because we're going straight on to the original finish. So nice thin coat. The bristles should do the work, like feathering the brush around. Remember, I'm going for a more flat finish. If you want textural, lots of paint, texture, move the brush around and then you can get all sorts of lovely anomalies and dark wax looks absolutely stunning over the top of it. So that's one thing that you can do. But in this case, I'm kind of going for the same finish as the walls, kind of matte and flat. So on with that first coat, nice and thin and feathering away, I'm just feathering the edges away. Um, and, and notice as well, I'm gonna pick up the can. When I dip my paintbrush, I'm not dipping in and covering all of this paintbrush. I'm touching, I'm touching the ends of the paintbrush. Can you see how it's all broken up? So don't dip the whole thing and start splodging it around. Just tip, tip, tip the brush into the top of the paint and that should be enough and again, like I said, the bristles should do all of the work and spreading round. Now I can feel lots of traction in my brush and that's because there's no water in, in the um, br bristles of this brush. I'm okay with that, but if you're new to this, a moist brush, and every so often, if you've got a little atomizer and you're, before you dip in, spritz the brush, wiggle it in your can and take the excess off then that should keep the brush nice and moist as you work through it. So that is first coat on the pine chest of drawers. There you go. You can see it's not full coverage. I pretty much think this, once that's nice and dry, the second coat will go on and it will be nearly, I would say it'll be about 85 to 90% coverage you may get a little bit of lift off on the corners where the brush has kind of aggravated the first layer. So let that dry really, really well and then um, go back and just do that extra little touch up and then you should be good to leave it to dry for, it depends which climate you're in. In the sunshine here, 15 minutes and it's dry and I'm waxing. So it's really super, super quick. So if you're, at the minute, I'm in the house, I've got the heating on so it will dry super quick. Um, but if you're in colder climates, it does take a little bit longer to dry. Make sure it's dry all the way through. If you've got any wet patches in your chalk paint and then you go in with your wax, when you go in with your wax, it kind of seals them in and you can kind of see um, a variety of different colours in that shade of paint. So be, be mindful of that and be careful not to do that. Allow the chalk paint to dry. Damp weathers um, in the UK, definitely. My workshop is really tough to heat and keep it warm enough to do my job, really. It needs insulating, which is the next job after we 
kind of finish the house. So that's it. Also, anything on the outside of the drawers? Um, I'm not too particular. Some people are particular about whether the paint into the drawers and things like that. Um, I feather over the edges of these. If my paint goes in there, I'm not worried. Once the drawer's in, you don't see that. If you're working on a, a piece of furniture like a sideboard that may have opening cupboards, then take your decorator's tape and just an inch in, is the width of the door I would say, an inch in, just lay a bit of decorator's tape, like where this uh, st stopper is, lay a bit of tape and then paint up to that edge if the wood's good inside and then when you remove it you have a nice clean connection, um, especially if you're selling it, you may want to paint a different colour inside and then once you paint the outside, tape the other side, paint back out to that line. Um, and I can't think of anything else. I think it's just um, trying to reel back some of the thought process of when I first started and how, obviously I've moved on a little bit since then, and um, I forget what it might like to be as a beginner. So I'm trying to think like a beginner today on, on what I need. And it was the old why that reminded me of the beginning, because that was the first can. I think that's about it. Let me just swivel you around to the other side of the room. I'm gonna take you out here and show you the other side of the room. Um, so what we've got here, this has all been newly decorated. Um, I've got a white ceiling, old white wall, white ceiling, white cornicing, old white walls. You can see there's a slight color difference between like pure white and white. And then this is my color mix. I'll have to, somehow put that out there. Canterbury yellow, graphite, there was canvas, a little bit of Knight, Knightsbridge green, um, and then some white just to lighten it. And I've got like a Chateau gray color. Um, the radiator is painted in satin paint. That's another color mix, majority graphite, tinsy wincy bit of Oxford Navy and a tinsy wincy bit of Athenian Black just to deepen it. But that was to match in with my other radiators, which was the manufacturing finish. This is an, an, you know, a radiator that I didn't replace and I just wanted to match the colours in. So and the panelling, again, that's actually wall paint. If you can see, I've got beadboard down there. That's actually the wall paint. It's really resilient to scratches and scuffs and lots of things, but you could use um, the um, satin paint on that as well, but I haven't. It's straight wall paint, top to bottom. So there you go. I will share some of this room once it's just about completed. Um, thank you to those people that might have stayed. I, I'm gonna just click on there to see, oh, I can't, oh yeah, there's all the comments. Um, risk it for a biscuit, I can see. I can see a few comments. So thank you to my followers for staying because many of you will know many of those things and probably have a lot more other tips. Feel free to um, pop the tips in your own tips because this is a community that shares things. It's not just me sharing things. Anything you wanna put into, interject into the comments, come out of the video, I'll load the video, write your experiences into the comments. It may help somebody, because I know that people read the comments. It may help somebody in the future. If you're a stockist, um, feel free to share this to any of your customers, put it on your pages. Um, it might encourage a brand new painter somewhere. If it goes out wide, uh, wide, wide and far, we may get some new people that just fall in love with chalk paint and what the possibilities. And I am proof of that. I have traveled the world teaching some of these possibilities from South Africa to Australia and many countries in between. It all started right here. It started with a can of old white. So I am proof in the pudding how chalk paint can change so many's life, not just for, you know, social media reasons, it's been a really good thing for me here through some difficult times. I've not shared it all with you, but I've painted through my tough times. Many of you will know what they are. 
So it is really good in a, a difficult world that we're right in right now, um, is to find that little bit of headspace for ourselves, and I find it, it really helps. Paint therapy, isn't it? Right, I'm not gonna ramble on any longer. Share away, let's see if we can get this small um, video live, whatever you wanna call it, around, and people can kind of see what I have to offer. And obviously, beyond the basics, there's a whole lot, of, which is right here on this channel, on Jonathan Mark Mendes Painted Love, you will find me using chalk paint in many different ways. Anyway, much love, I'm signing out, I'm gonna finish my job. Mr. M will expect this to be finished when I get home. I should be able to do, it'll dry quick, it's warm. Um, did you put uh, wax or varnish on the radio? No, straight on. So satin will go over wood and metal. I, had the, I was asked this question the other night, will it crack when, it, when the heat comes on? No, I've, I've had it on my bedroom radiator for just, well, as it came out, the can that I actually was given didn't even have a logo on it. And he sent me some paint and I said, I'm gonna test it and it went on the radiator. And that must be a year now over a year maybe, and it, it's doing beautifully well. So no cracking, no vanishing, it is hardened. What I would say, curing, that's one thing, curing time. Um, a wax finish, especially if you're selling furniture, please tell your customer not to um, put anything on it for the first month. The wax needs to cure, basically, um, it, it will harden the wax over time. The same thing for um, satin, I would say 20 days to a month for it really to cure, harden. It will be dry, it will be wiped clean within, within a day. All of those things will happen, but no harsh chemicals on either finish and just allow it to cure for a good period of time. The satin needs to harden. You can imagine it will basically, it, it's about the moisture evaporating from these materials until it really hardens. So, especially with the chest of drawers, be mindful of that traction if you've painted the sides. Um, I painted two tables in the living room that have got um, drop leaves on them and I painted into those connection and I've not had, I'd left them for a month, but we now use them up and down and it is fabulous, no chipping at all. Um, it really is uh, durable. Difference between satin and um, uh, chalk paint and wax finishes, I think sometimes think um, it's easier to fix a wax finish. You know, if something happens, you can pick out your colour again, paint the whole section again, the top maybe, wax straight over, it's quick, it's done. Satin, if you've got any big gouge in it or it's uh, something's tumbled over and it's knocked a hole in it, you're gonna have to fill sand and, um, really get it smooth before you finish. Whereas I think it's a little bit easier to fix chalk paint. I'm just a bit biased. I've used it for uh, te nearly 10 years. Right, I am truly tuning out. Great questions, guys. Keep on pumping them in there. Um, please give me a thumbs up and um, help the algorithms. I'm going to try and get into the workshop in the next two days. Hopefully, I will film something as a furniture tutorial. I'm doing my best to get through the house stuff and get back to you guys. Much love, I will see you all very soon. Take care, bye bye.